In today's tutorial learn how to do a star afghan. This has been written for babies but guess what once you get beyond the first few rounds right in the middle you can go as big as you want to. Let's get started right now. Welcome back to Yarnspirations as well as the crochetcrowd.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to learn how to make a star afghan together. Now I did a star afghan many years ago but I will tell you that this star afghan the starting point is so much easier than the one I had done years ago that it's an easier way to get started. Now once we get beyond the first few rounds it's all going to be the same. So you can go as big or as small as you want to because once you understand this pattern it just is basically just repeating what you already know around and around and around. Today I'm going to be using uh, the Karen Simply Baby. It's a relatively new line and it's a lot thicker than normally uh, a Karen Simply Soft and it's actually really uh, amazing colors throughout the entire line. So we're gonna be using that today. Size 6 millimeter or size J crochet hook today and we're gonna get started right now. So to get started we're going to start off with the center piece just like so. You can see that there is five sides that when we go to start right in the center and then we're going to be expanding out to do each one of the tips and there's only five. Now the trick is is to watch exactly where your stitches are going. Every time you go past a tip for example you come along it's the other side where you can eventually go wrong when you come back down to this side and we always have to make sure once we get beyond a certain row that we skip the, the two middle just like so, so that it will keep the point uh, growing proper, properly on all five sides. So here's the pattern that we're going to be using today. You can find this pattern on yarnspirations.com. There's a link in the more information of this video to be able to direct you right to that particular pattern. Now what you have here is that we are using baby coordinates in here. You can use this yarn or I'm substituting it with my hook and etc. If you're going to substitute it, it will change the yarn uh, quantities but you know what? It's your creativity. Now as you change in colors I believe every two to three um, revolutions. I think it's every two. You know you can change that on your own. You can make your own uh, particular styles that you wish and really it's very versatile. So without further ado let's grab up our yarn and get started right now. So let's begin. We're going to create a slip knot to create the very center of the star and it says to chain four. So remember that the first one that we start off with on the hook never counts as one. So we have one, two, three and four and let's make a ring by putting the hook into the beginning chain just like so. Grab the yarn and pull through that uh, loop and the other loop. Okay so here is your straggler. Just keep it on top and you have your interior ring inside just like so. So let's do our first round together. We're going to start by really establishing the five sides first and it says to chain six. So let's just do that. So one, two, three. Now in the rules of crochet is that the chaining of three counts as a double crochet and that's true for this entire pattern but it says we had to chain six so we have to add three more. So one, and two and three. So what I want you to do is I want you to visualize this crochet coming up and then it's kind of bending over just like this. Okay and now we're going to double crochet back into the center of that ring. Put the straggler down over top and so that you can trap it. So wrap your yarn and go right into the center for another double crochet. There's gonna be a total of five posts. So this is a post here. This is another post and in between those there's gonna be a chaining of three. One, two, three. Come back into the interior of the ring again for another double crochet and we continue to do that uh, until you get your five in there. Okay so you got your next double crochet, chain three, one, two, three. Double crochet back into that center of the ring because we don't have enough posts and then one, two and three. Okay coming back into the center of the ring again and I believe we have our five. Okay, so I'm gonna count the one, two, three, four, and five. Once you have that fifth one there, please just chain three, one, two, three, and join it to the third chain up. So one, two, and three. So just insert into into the chain, pull through and through. So you should have a total of five spokes that you can see. Let's move along to round number two. Round number two is only for this round so it's not the repeat pattern going all the way around each and every time. So we're going to slip stitch into this chain three space. Just pull through and through and now let's get ready. So we're going to chain three. One, two, 
three. I already talked to you about that the chaining three counts as a double crochet. So important that you remember that. And we're going to double crochet two more times into the same chain three space. We're now creating the first tip. Okay, so that's half of the first point or tip and then we're gonna chain three. One, two, three, uh, oops, three and then double crochet three more times into the same chain three space. So basically what you're looking at is a tip of the star. It's coming up on one side, making the turn of the tip and then coming down the other side. So I want you to jump to the next chain three space and immediately just three double crochets. So there's no fancy footwork involved. Just three double crochets first. Okay, chaining of three, one, two, three. So there's the next tip coming in and double crochet three more times into the same chain three space. So guess what? You had five spokes, therefore there's five spaces. So when you go to do this in each and every one, you end up with five tips of your star. So you have one here and one here. So once you have that done, go to the next. So just three double crochet. So this is a lot easier from the original star that we had years ago. Um, I just kind of stumbled on this pattern last night and I was really, really surprised how easy it was to start and I wish I would have found it years ago. <laughs> but you know that's part of crochet and you know you find patterns as you go. So you got another tip in there. Let's do another one. So the next one is three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet. One, two, three. And so that's the other side. Just like this. Coat, we got one more tip to go. You can see that the five spaces, here's the last one. So it's three double crochet again. Chain three, three double crochet. So that is gonna happen on the, each and every time that you're on the tip of your star. It's what happens in between is what makes the difference. Once you get these last three in, you're just gonna simply just join it to the beginning chaining three to start that you started with. Now you can see it doesn't really have much of a point factor at this time but we're going to be starting to establish that in the next round and the next round is what is going to be the same for each and every round until the end of your afghan. So each and every time that you end up coming back around on an afghan such as this, you will always end up in the middle section right here but you cannot start there because what happens is in the middle of the star in between the points is that you have to have two um, stitches skipped. So when it says in the instructions you need to slip stitch to the next stitch, it's doing that so it gets you out of the center. So you're just gonna immediately move over one and slip stitch and then you're ready to go like so. So, so what you're seeing here is that there's three stitches currently right now. We've just slip stitched to the middle one of the three. So that's where we're gonna start and we're going to chain three. One, two, three and then just double crochet into the next one that's available to you. That's all there is on this particular side of the tip of the star. So now we're in the point. So the point is always what we always have is three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet. And you do that every time you're in a point. So that's not a hard thing to think. So the, the problem is is that you see a lot of people going really wonky on their on their stars. The, the, the problem is is right here. Okay so you have three left. Here's your center point of your tip uh, like in between the tips. So what happens is that your first one is actually right here. You see how it's opened up on yours or my original that I had yesterday. It's not that obvious. Sometimes you have to move these stitches out of the way to access this first one. But if you think the first one is right here, what happens is that it throws it out of alignment. So you gotta make sure it's just directly, as soon as it comes around, it's just directly there. Okay, and so you're going to double crochet two times. One into, one into each of the two. So what happens is that this side here, you see how you had two here? You have your point which is the, th the three and three and three and then this one should only have two. So whatever is existing on this side must exist on this side. So if you've done it right, what's gonna happen is that the next stitch is right in the center and the next stitch is right in the center and you're just gonna skip over those. And you're immediately going to go to the third one over and just double crochet. And you're going to go to the next one. 
which is the only one left before the next tip. So this is making sense because you only had two over here, you only had two here and now two. So that makes sense. So what happens when the star goes wonky or your sides are not growing properly, what's happening is that you're not getting the right amount of counts in between the, the tipping points of the, of the star. So we're on the tip again. So it's three double crochet, three chain, three double crochet. So the only difference between this round and all of the other rounds that you're going to happen is that the distance between the center point of your, of your, uh, in between the points to this gets bigger and bigger by two stitches each and every round. So if you can remember that. So what's gonna happen on the next round is that we only had two here before we did the tip. The next time we're only, we're gonna have four and then the next time it's gonna be six and the next time it's gonna be eight. It's always increases by two. So now that we have our tip in, the first one is right here. Okay, it's right under that first one. Once you begin to visualize this pattern, it's a lot easier. Once the, the middle, you see the middle gap has just started because we've skipped over. Once you get beyond this uh, particular round, it gets easier and easier. So now let's skip over two, which is the two centers that you see. And just go to the third, just immediately double crochet to that one and to the next. And then do your next point. So do you see the commonality there? It's really quite easy. So what I'm gonna do for you is that you can do the rest of this round on your own. You know exactly what you're doing at this point and I'm going to show you how to change a color because where you change the color is a huge difference uh, within this project. So remember the tipping point, I just got it. The next one is right, appears to be underneath it. Okay, so it's not in a gap space, it's right in the stitch itself. And if you feel more comfortable, you know, don't be scared to write down the number of stitches that you're doing in between the points. If it makes you feel good. I did that in the beginning many years ago because I was kept screwing up and getting the wrong counts on different sides and it makes the tips grow at different lengths. One, two, three. So go all the way around and I'll meet you back in just a moment and I'll show you how to finish this round off plus change your colors. So I've come up all the way back around and I'm skipping over my two and then I immediately I'm running into the next one around. So we have to, if I'm gonna change color but we still have to finish off this round completely before we can do the changing of color. So we're just gonna simply just uh, join with the top of the chain three that we started with but you can't join your color yet, you have to wait. So what happens is within each and every round right now is that you, as I mentioned before is that you're always in the center point. You have to move over one. So when you're changing colors, when you go to slip stitch by moving over one, instead of grabbing this color if you don't want to use that color or if you wanna change your color, you're gonna snip this color off first and then you're going to create a slip knot with your new color and use that new color to pull through when you go to do that slip stitch. And what that does is it gets the new color all ready for you so that there's no color bleed or any kind of uh, abnormality showing within your work. So when you go to start this round like you would with all the rest of them, you begin to chain three. So one, two, and three and then you just immediately go into the next stitch. So remember what I said in the last uh, part of this um, tutorial is that last time we had two stitches before the peak. This time there will be four. So all, each one of the peaks will always go uh, grow by two stitches before you hit the peak. So this first chaining of three counts as, as a double crochet. So there's your four and now you're ready for your, your corner. See how I'm trapping this yarn underneath of the line. It then keeps it in control so that I can trim these yarns afterward without anybody visualizing where I've actually uh, changed my colors. There's no tails hanging out so it's pretty cool. So you do your tip as normal, three, three and three. So three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet. Just like that. Okay and now you started this time, you had four on this side. So there should be four in this one before you get to the center points. And so remember the first one is right under that first one. So you can either count it, one, and then two, three, and four. Or what I just do is that I train my eyes to just ignore the two middles because you're gonna skip over those two each and every time. So you skip over those two and just start double crocheting into the next. So sometimes I just kinda quickly just take a quick count 
to make sure that my counts are fine. So this time, this side I should be going up four before getting to the peak and look at that. So I have my four and then the peak again. So the, what's gonna happen on this particular star is that the points are gonna get bigger and bigger growing wider and wider where the interior right in the middle will just kind of um, grow slowly. So it makes the, it makes it more, more pointy as you go. Okay, so their corners are always, or the peaks are always the same. Three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet and you do that all the way around. So you can change the colors as often and as, or as little as you want. It just uh, is up to your personal preference. This is all the stitches continually going around and around. Very simple uh, idea. So I have not been counting but I can see that I'm in the middle. So I'm skipping over the two in the middle and I can count back if I want to. And there's my four. So I know that I'm in alignment and then I just quickly ju jump over those two middle ones and continue to go on the other peak itself. So the basically you just have to keep going around and around and your points will come out and when we look at my other example here that I was practicing with last night is that you just continue. You can play with some variegated yarns just like so. Um, really kind of a cool idea. Um, what I just did on the very edge, okay it doesn't say to do this in the pattern but I just did a single crochet onto every stitch all the way around and I put six single crochets into the peak just like so to give it a nice kind of finish just like this. So this will grow completely flat uh, no matter what size that you make it as long as you keep those stitches consistent and you can kind of really get a glimpse when you look at the peak how it's growing up, up and up and up and because it's all growing by two on either side and it just makes it kind of easier to understand if you can see that happening. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarnspirations as well as thecrochetcrowd.com. Good luck if you do this. I'd love to see your creativity of course on Facebook. Till next time we'll see ya.